So over the last week, I was lucky enough to actually be flown all the way to the whole other side of the planet to Los Angeles and I actually got to play Jedi Survivor a month early and today we're going to be talking about essentially my initial impressions on the pretty much three, three and a half hours of gameplay that I got to play during the event. Now, firstly, I want to give a massive thank you to EA and all of those involved in giving me this opportunity. It was absolutely mental. One of the coolest experiences I've ever had in my life, if not the coolest experience. And I also couldn't have done this without all of you guys here on the channel so yeah a massive thank you to everyone involved but without wasting any time let's get stuck right into it now it is worth mentioning that this gameplay is actually not my own gameplay unfortunately we weren't able to record our own playtest so this is just some sort of random b-roll that they gave us after the event it's the same gameplay that you guys are going to see from pretty much every other content creator who was at the event but in saying that it is all completely new gameplay too so you may have seen it on other channels who've been to the event but this was not available prior to this event so this isn't the same as like the IGN game and stuff so all of the stuff you're seeing is essentially like world first gameplay unless like i said you've been watching other channels first because yeah everyone who was at the event got this same gameplay there is a lot to talk about so i'm going to be sort of just doing my initial thoughts pretty much raw thoughts on just all the stuff that i noted down during the playtest and then in the coming weeks i'll be splitting it off into more like specific videos talking about different topics so today's video might be a little bit like scrambled there's going to be a lot of different thoughts in here but then i will hone it down over the next few weeks into more like specific specific structured type of videos. Now, also just quickly before we get into it, I'm also gonna be doing a Q&A. So like anything you guys wanna ask about the game, I'm gonna be trying to answer as many questions as I can or as many as I'm allowed to. If you guys have any questions about the game, be sure to leave comments down below. I'm gonna be doing that in a separate video as well as pretty much eight hours after this video goes live. I will be live right here on the channel doing a live Q&A as well. I'm gonna be playing through Fallen Order and just, yeah, talking with you guys about my experience with the game and all that kind of thing. So be sure to leave your comments down below as well as tuning in to the live stream but anyway with that being said let's get stuck into my initial thoughts now the first thing that i have to say about it is that it looks and feels absolutely incredible it's honestly got some of the best graphics that i've ever seen in a game before now keep in mind we were playing on some very very beefy pcs with really really high tech monitors and stuff like it was pretty much being played on the best rig you can play and it was pc gameplay so i don't know what it's going to play like on you know xbox series x and ps5 but they are as high tech as most pcs these days so i'd imagine it will look just as good on those consoles the shortest summary that i can give to the three three and a half hours that i got to play is that this game literally is just full in order, but better in every single way and i'm not exaggerating when i say that you take full in order you take all of the good bits about that game you make them even better and then all of the parts about that game that kind of sucked they have really changed that and improved it dramatically so that right there is really the entire summary of all i have to say but i'll obviously break it down into more specific areas but overall it is literally just full in order on steroids that's all i have to really say about it now the section of gameplay that we got to play was pretty much an hour into the game so they've said that we missed the first hour and where we picked up was yeah roughly an hour into the game and we were on Kobo which is obviously the same planet that we've seen in like the IGN gameplay and stuff so this does seem to be like the the focal planet of the game so far and what I've got to say about Kobo is that it is actually really really open it's a lot more open than I expected it to be it obviously looks pretty open from the stuff that we've seen in the IGN gameplay and the trailers but it genuinely feels like a borderline open world like it's still got that linear aspect to it in certain areas it does have moments throughout the story where it kind of directed you through a certain path and there's not that many other ways to go but for the most part the entire planet is realistically an open world planet it is absolutely huge it's honestly like three four five times minimum bigger than any of the planets in fallen order i was genuinely blown away by how big it is and i played like i said for three or three and a half hours and i didn't even get to two whole like massive sections of the map so with three hours of exploration there was still like probably half the planet that i hadn't even seen yet and i'm sure that can kind of put it into scale of how massively open and just like immense this planet was now on kobo the i guess sort of main section is called rambler's reach it's like a little town within the planet that we have seen little bits of gameplay and stuff through the IGN coverage and something that was really awesome is that this is kind of like the hub of the entire game they've already said that Kobo is kind of like your home planet but Rambler's Reach is kind of the home city I guess so you're actually able to improve the city you're able to bring in recruits from I guess different planets like I said we didn't play on any other planet so I can't 
confirm that, but I'm going to imagine, you know, when we play on Coruscant, you can talk to NPCs and actually recruit them back to Rambler's Reach and sort of make that city even better. In a similar style to any of you guys who have played Red Dead Redemption 2, you can kind of upgrade the campsite, you can bring in recruits, you can like upgrade different sections and it had a really similar vibe to that. So that is a really awesome feature, kind of adds a bit of replayability and also just gives you something to do on the side. You don't have to always be playing the main storyline. You can get to a point in the story and just go, you know what, I'm going to go to a different planet and just like recruit some people back and improve Rambles Reach. So I definitely love that element, especially being such a big fan of Red Dead Redemption 2. And I'm really keen to see how it actually plays because we didn't really get to test that that much in the playtest. Now, something else to mention and keep in mind, we didn't get to play this, but we saw a little showcase of it at the end where Jason DeHarris, who is one of the lead developers on the game and he's an absolute beast at this game, we actually got to see finally some blaster gameplay. Now, I'm going to be honest, it looks absolutely amazing and I think it's probably going to be most people's favorite stance in the game. You carry your saber in one hand and the blaster in the other and it looks absolutely amazing. I don't even know how to put it into words to be honest how good it looked. It looks so different than all of the other stances and I genuinely cannot wait to actually get my hands on it. I'm kind of disappointed we didn't get to test it but yeah it looked absolutely amazing and I think all of you guys are going to absolutely love it. Now, something else that I noticed was that throughout the playtest, we were in a room of about like 70 different monitors. There's three different sessions between 210 different people who got to test the game early. And so that means pretty much in each session, there was about 70 different people. And when I was playing, I was actually in the back row and I could see pretty much every monitor. And every time I looked around, like I'd be playing for a bit and then you'd get to like a little cutscene and I'd maybe just take a glance around. Every single monitor that I saw was doing something that I hadn't even done yet. And I think that kind of goes to show how expansive this game actually is when there's 70 people playing a game and it's only a three hour little demo. And yet every screen that I looked at had done something different than I had even seen. There was people playing parts of the game that I'm like, what the hell, how did I miss that? There were some people that were actually behind where I was up to. So I'd seen the bit that they were up to, but they were playing differently. They had a different stance or they were wearing different skins and stuff. Like every monitor was completely different. Whereas if you did the same thing with Fallen Order, pretty much everyone would be doing the same thing. There's only really one way to play Fallen Order and it could not be any more different with this game. It was absolutely ridiculous. And if all of that is happening in only a three hour little demo, then I can't even imagine how the whole game's gonna be because the game feels like it's gonna be a lot bigger. If it does end up being like a 25 hour long story, then I can't even imagine how many different ways there are gonna be to play. So that to me was probably like the single most impressive thing that there's just so much to do, so many different areas of the map, so many different ways to play. The customization was mental like everyone had different haircuts and different skins different lightsaber hilts like it was just ridiculous and like i said this was only in like a three hour window so massive props to respawn for just how expansive they've made this game touching on that a little bit further the i guess side content in the game is absolutely immense i barely even touched the story because i was trying to just kind of explore trying to go around kobo and see what sort of side missions there were and stuff like that so i probably only did about like 45 minutes maybe an hour tops of the storyline and i was just going around doing like side quests and meeting different npcs going to different little like puzzle areas and stuff and just on kobo alone there was just like crazy amounts of different content to do there were some really really cool boss fights that i won't touch on on this video they're not really spoilers like they're not story spoilers but they're more stuff that for this video i want to just kind of keep it secret but if you guys Keep your eyes peeled on the channel. I will touch on that stuff eventually, especially on the clips channel. I'm probably going to show the actual like fights themselves, but there were some like side little boss fights that were genuinely some of the coolest things. They may be already cooler than any boss fight in Fallen Order. I'm not even joking. And these are optional boss fights, like hidden boss fights. So going from Fallen Order, where it was obviously a very linear game to now actually playing a game that is pretty much the same, where it does have that linear element. If you want to just play the story, it's, it's somewhat linear. It's that kind of A to B type of story, similar to something like God of War or The Last of Us, for example, but there's just so much side content now as well. Different areas to explore, different stuff to unlock, different boss fights. It is just genuinely amazing. It's everything that I wanted from Fallen Order because that game was a little bit too linear for me. And this has just taken that and gone, okay, that 
game is just going to be in here, but we're going to expand the entire, like, outside of the game to have heaps of side content and stuff. So they've absolutely nailed that so far, and I cannot wait to see what it's like on all the other planets. This was just on Kobo, like I said, so I can't wait to see, like, all the little side content on, like, Coruscant and whatever other planets they've got. I think we are in for a, a real treat here for any of you guys who are like me, who like to just explore and do, like, the little side missions, try and get all the Easter eggs and stuff like that. I think there's going to be a hell of a lot to do, and I legit think this game could have like 50 to 60 hours worth of content if you want to actually try and do all the side missions rather than just the story which in full and order was only about like 13 hours so in terms of that side of things it seems like it's going to be absolutely massive which is pretty much exactly what i wanted from the sequel now that's pretty much it for like my broad like initial thoughts like i said i would be breaking it down there's like a lot more to talk about there's so many things i haven't even mentioned in this video but i've pretty much just gotten back from la i'm absolutely buggered right now and i'm essentially going to just get my thoughts out here right now come back and regroup and like put some more thought and structure into the you know upcoming videos so keep your eyes peeled on the channel but that was it for pretty much my initial thoughts on the game realistically this game is fallen order on steroids all the good stuff in fallen order is still there the combat is really good it's actually a lot improved on the first game as well the like story elements and the really good soundtrack and just the immersiveness all of that stuff is still there but all of the stuff in fallen order that kind of sucked the stuff like it was a little bit too linear the you know the lack of fast travel all the backtracking all that kind of thing even just like some slightly clunky animations and all that sort of stuff that is like drastically improved so the best way to summarize is that this is all the good stuff of fallen order even better than it was and then everything else is just on steroids they've completely opened it up the combat is ridiculously good and Pretty much if you liked Fallen Order, even if you gave Fallen Order like a 6 or 7 out of 10, this game you are going to love, I can almost guarantee it. And for me personally, I know this is very, very early to say, and I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, you're just excited because you got to play the game early, blah, blah, blah. I genuinely think this game has Game of the Year potential. I'm not saying it's going to win because that's impossible to tell. Hogwarts Legacy has done so well as Starfield and there's so many big games coming out this year, but I'm almost going to say it with chest right now, this game will be nominated for Game of the Year. Whether it wins it or not, I don't know, but I do think it will be in that top six and I don't know man it feels like it could potentially win it if it doesn't it's definitely going to come very close I'm really really confident about that so if you guys are interested in the game be excited it, it felt amazing I cannot wait to actually get my hands on the full game and realistically it just comes down to story at this point like the story could suck and it's gonna you know make the game feel not nearly as good but if the story is as good as it was in Fallen Order then yeah this is a this is going to be a banger I can absolutely assure that because the gameplay side of things the graphics the smoothness the polish the animations all of that kind of thing it is genuinely really good it realistically just comes down to the story and little things like the the performance for example it may struggle on the consoles who knows those small things they could still be an issue but everything that i experienced in that three or three and a half hours has got me very very excited and feeling very very confident about the game as well but anyway guys that is going to do it for my initial impressions like i said there's plenty of content on the way especially this week and next week i'm going to be just pumping out the content and then no doubt there'll be still plenty of stuff to talk about in the lead up to launch so be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you are interested in Jedi Survivor and also be sure to check out the clips channel as well I'll leave that linked down in the description on this channel I'm going to be you know doing the full length sort of videos but on that channel I'm just going to literally be uploading like a bunch of clips from the b-roll that they've given us and doing a lot more like small you know short form content talking about just more specific things so be sure to check that out as well thank you all very much for watching you guys have a great day and may the force be with you always